Thank you very much, Jackie, and uh, thanks for that intro. Um, yeah, so my task this afternoon is just to provide an overview of uh, one of our best sellers, if you like. It's the uh, uh, it's handbook for preventing stress and burnout amongst AOD workers. So th this is what, what it looks like in its current uh, iteration. So it's actually an updated version of uh, one of our most um, sought after resources. The first iteration was done in uh, 2005 uh, by uh, Nat Skinner and uh, Professor Roach. And um, because it was such a, it was kind of flying off the shelves to, to, to such a great extent, we updated it um, recently. So it's quite a user-friendly and practical resource that simply um, des describes the symptoms and consequences of stress and burnout within the AOD field, uh, identifies key factors uh, impacting on stress and burnout, provides practical strategies, um, and is based on the latest available evidence. So what we did was essentially to uh, extend and update the um, the lit review that was done in 2005, and we found quite a lot of uh, new and uh, quite strong evidence about what seems to work in this area. So why have this resource? Well, it's kind of self-evident in a way. AOD workers are our greatest resource in reducing AOD harms. Uh, it's therefore essential to protect and enhance AOD worker wellbeing to maximise their capacity to, to work in the field and uh, to deliver high quality services. Um, AOD work can be highly rewarding and satisfying, but it can also be very demanding. You know, AOD problems tend to be chronic and, and relapsing and, and it's important to, to build resilience amongst the workforce uh, to cope with those kinds of demands. Um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander workers have particular needs um, and reducing stress and burnout has has uh, requires multi-level approaches. So those approaches, of course, also need to be adapted uh, to within each organisational setting. So uh, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, reducing stress and burnout requires different levels and types of approaches. And I've identified a few here. The first one is system-wide approaches. And here I'm referring to things like uh, re remuneration, uh, sector-wide uh, workforce development, having ongoing funding for programs so that people aren't looking for a new job every 12 months, those sorts of things, which are often beyond the scope of organisations to control. Uh, the second level uh, is organisational approaches, and I'll uh, drill down into this more in just a moment. Uh, strategies that individual workers themselves can implement to, to keep themselves uh, free of stress and burnout, or the next level is, is strategies for organisations employing Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander AOD workers. And finally, um, strategies that AOD, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander AOD workers themselves can implement. So you'll see we've put quite a lot of emphasis on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander workers, AOD workers, and that's because of their cent central importance to, to this particular field and their vulnerability to a range of stress and burnout issues. So I've only got a few minutes in this presentation, so therefore I'm just going to focus on organisations. Uh, that is to say, the, the strategies that organisations can implement to reduce stress and burnout amongst their workers. And I've just, just got a range of these uh, drawn out of the handbook. First one is implementing broad-based health promotion uh, policies and programs, um, of which are programs which directly address stress and burnout are a component. But we're also talking about things like diet, exercise, alcohol consumption, Except things like having showers, having bike racks, that sort of stuff, broadly based health promotion programs, which aim to holistically address health promotion issues uh, within the workforce. Uh, conducting a stress audit, there's a, a lot, a number of uh, quite well uh, validated um, stress audit um, tools that can, the organisations can use to both measure the level of stress being experienced by their workplace, but also measure changes in those uh, levels of stress over time. Uh, having a realistic job preview and employee employee orientation programs like people need to understand the, the nature of the role before they join up uh, they need to understand that often people aren't going to be cured in the first couple of interviews or discussions or treatment uh, episodes and once they're in they need to understand what their role is within the organization so in, uh, employee orientation programs are very important things like orientation manuals buddy programs, those sorts of things, which are reasonably well, well established. Uh, supporting 
professional career development, uh, AOD workers need uh, to have a kind of uh, professional and career development program, at least to identify some steps where they might grow in the future and have uh, increasingly perhaps complex tasks allocated to them, those sorts of things. Flexible working conditions where possible, things like compressed weeks, working from home, tele, uh, telework, that's, that sort of stuff, where that's possible. Management training and development. Um, there's quite a lot of evidence that suggests that the quality of uh, management uh, has a significant impact on the quality of AOD services which are provided. So therefore, the uh, management training and development is quite an important component of both reducing stress and burnout, but also the provision of quality services. Job design, uh, redesign and recrafting. This is obviously a, a co-design process conducted with the employee, but sometimes it's possible to uh, recraft a job so that you get better outcomes for the for the worker, for the organisation, but most importantly, for also for the clients. Uh, recognition and rewards. Obviously, many um, AOD organisations are fairly strapped for cash, so this need not be remuneration, but it just can be just recognition of a job well done, those sorts of things. Uh, and finally, critically important is uh, mentoring and clinical supervision. Um, what, one of the, the clear messages from the available evidence is that mentoring and clinical supervision are very important uh, in terms of worker wellbeing, reducing stress, but also the uh, provision of quality services. So um, an electronic uh, version of the resources available here, I'll just leave that up for a moment for the, the people playing at home. And that's me done.